Hello my friends and welcome back to another Baldur's Gate 3 character building guide. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're covering one of the best subclasses in the entire game for one of the best classes in the entire game. I'm talking about the Nature Cleric. Nature Cleric I think is highly underrated by the community, but I think it's actually secretly one of the best Cleric subclasses because its spell list covers for the, uh, the very few weaknesses of Cleric, which is already of course one of the most powerful characters in the game. When I did my class and subclass tier list, people pushed back against this when I rated Nature Cleric very high, so I think Nature Cleric is actually highly underrated by the community, and I wanted to show you how to build a powerful Nature Cleric that is just an excellent all-rounder character, fits extremely well in any party, covers all of the roles that clerics normally fill and more besides, and doubles down on many of the strengths of Cleric, making them even better. Nature Cleric is a character that requires almost no support from your party, so it can fit into just about any party comp without any issues, um, will provide tanking, support, damage, and control all in a single package to your character. The only thing you don't really get is skill access from this character, but otherwise it's going to cover every single possible role and so can fit into any party very easily um, and be an incredibly strong addition to that party. So I'm going to go over how to build a nature cleric so that you too can have one of the most powerful and flexible characters in the game at your disposal. Before I begin though, we are I would like to take a moment to say thank you so much to Altfax for the $10 donation, uh, Kyla Kell for the $10, Josh Hobbs for the $10 again and for being such a reliable commenter, really appreciate it, and Nick for the $5, as well as Mike Tibbles for becoming a channel member. Thank you so much, my friends. I really do appreciate the support. It really does mean a lot. All right, let's get in and start building a nature cleric. So obviously the first thing that we need to do is we need to select nature domain. And let's talk a little bit about what this gives you at level 1 and what it gives you at later levels and why I think it's so powerful. So Nature Domain Cleric at first level gives you two spells, neither of which are particularly strong. You get Speak with Animals and Animal Friendship. Animal Friendship might be the worst spell in the entire game, um, but Speak with Animals is pretty good to have access to somewhere in your party. You also don't need dialogue skills to use most of the things that Speak with Animals gives you, so this can solve all of the dialogues with animals that Speak with Animals is good for without you having to actually spend resources on it at all, um, so it's just nice to have that option. You also get a druid cantrip, which is a, actually a pretty nice addition to cleric. You get uh, an option of four different druid cantrips. You can get poison spray, produce flame, which we already have access to as a cleric, so we can ignore this one, thorn whip, and most importantly, shillelagh, which yes, is how you pronounce it. Shillelagh lets you turn any staff or club magical and gives you the ability to add so and have it do 1d8 base damage that one eight-sided die of base damage plus it now uses your wisdom for attack rolls uh, and damage rolls instead of your strength that is actually an incredibly powerful addition to cleric's arsenal one thing that clerics don't normally get is reliable damage at levels one through four um, especially sustained damage. Once you're level 5, you get access to uh, Spirit Guardians and Guardian of Faith at level 7, and so start catching up in terms of damage, but most Cleric Domains don't actually contribute a lot of damage to combat at low levels. Shillelagh totally solves that problem, because it gives you a sustained damage option that you can use um, using your attack, your spellcasting modifier, so you don't have to spend attribute points in other stats in order to contribute a bunch of damage to your party. This sounds like a minor bonus, but it's actually a major addition to Cleric and helps really smooth out the early game uh, for a party because your Cleric can hit really hard. The trick with Shillelagh is that you want to cast it on a Torch, which normally does a d4 of damage plus a d4 of fire damage, and then the Shillelagh bonus will turn it to a d8 of damage plus a d4 of fire damage plus your Wisdom, and suddenly your your humble, non-magical torch is the hardest hitting weapon in the game uh, at level 1. So this gives your, your nature cleric not only the incredible utility that clerics get at first level, but also some of the best damage output for low level fights, getting you through levels 1 to 3 much more smoothly. You could, if you don't want to fight in melee, take um, Thorn Whip, which also is kind of cool to have on a Cleric, but Shillelagh is so good for Clerics and fits so well with what you're trying to do as a Cleric, where you want to get up in melee to use your 
excellent armor class and tanking abilities, uh, but also you want to do damage, that I highly recommend taking it. Other than that, Nature Domain also gives you heavy armor access, which in the very early game won't matter, but is really nice to have on clerics. It lets you use some of the best armor suits in the game and gives you a significantly higher AC. For our cantrip selection, other than Shillelagh, we're going to take the very standard cleric cantrip selection. We always want Guidance, and we want Produce Flame, so that we have a ranged attack option on this character, and this will use our wisdom as well. So now we have an excellent ranged attack and an excellent melee attack on this character, and have great sustained damage for the early game. And then for our final uh, selection, there's a bunch of different options, all of which are pretty good here. Um, you can take Light if you feel like you need to light things. Blade Ward is actually quite useful to have in the very early game, um, because if your character's out of position, it can be useful. I wouldn't necessarily recommend casting this in combat, or I wouldn't recommend casting this in combat as a default action, because typically it's going to be worse than just attacking or casting a, another spell. But there are times when you just need one turn for your allies to get to you to support, and Blade Ward can help keep your character alive in bad situations, so it's good to have access to just on any character. For our attribute selection, we get a bunch of different options. Like most clerics, we can actually go with a very greedy attribute split and take 17 wisdom, 16 constitution, and 15 dexterity. This will allow us to get the highest possible three attribute points when we get our first uh, our first ability score increase and get to 18 wisdom and 16 dexterity without losing any other attributes. If you don't like this stat split or want to have more strength, you can also go for a more standard split with 12 strength. This gives you a little more jump distance and a little more carry weight, which can be nice to have in a party as well. So either of those are totally reasonable. This character does not at all need Ethel's hair, uh, although you can use it if you want to take a stat split like this. You can get to level 18, you can get to 18 wisdom in only a single feat. That gets you, that will allow us to take two feats later on while still hitting 20 wisdom, so that's also an option for this character, but mostly what you want for this character is just a very standard attribute spread or the very greedy attribute spread. I'm going to recommend the greedy attribute spread just because I really like being able to take it, and initiative is just that good. You might be wondering why we take such high dexterity if we're going to be in heavy armor and won't be able to use our dexterity, and the answer is that initiative is incredibly powerful, especially for clerics and especially for nature clerics who get some of the best control spells in the game. We also get a bonus skill from being a nature cleric, but unfortunately it's not very useful. It's either nature survival or uh, animal handling. Animal handling is totally superseded by having speak with animals already. Almost every animal handling check in the game you can use speak with animals instead. Uh, and survival doesn't do anything because you can always just dig up the chests even if you fail the survival check, so you don't need to actually know survival to get the treasure chests. So you can put it in nature, but mostly this character is not going to be doing skills. It's here to give you all the combat effectiveness that clerics give you. All right, that's our level one build. Let's go on to level two. At Cleric level two, you get uh, the Nature Domain feature, and this, I think, is why people underrate Nature Domain, because Charm Animals and Plants is a very weak channel divinity ability. However, what we get from Nature Domain is actually the spell list, and the thing that makes Cleric Domain so powerful is having access to spells that aren't normally on the Cleric spell list. You'll start seeing what I mean next level when we get access to level 2 spells. For prepared spells at this level, by the way, we are... Uh, likely going to want to have, you always want Healing Word and you always want Command on every Cleric. Those are two incredibly important ones. Um, and you want Bless because concentrating on Bless is one of the best things that you can be doing in combat, especially in the early game. You also will want to have Sanctuary available. It's just an incredible panic button, especially if you're playing on Honor Mode. Sanctuary is just one of the most useful spells in the game, can really get your characters out of bad situations. And then for your last spell, I recommend taking Guiding Bolt. This just gives you a, a better damage option if you want one, if you want to really burst down an enemy, and because it's radiant damage, it'll be relevant later on. You could also take Inflict Wounds for a melee option, but since Nature Cleric gets Shillelagh, we already have a great melee option. 
Cleric level 3, we get access to the first of the super powerful Nature Domain unique spells, or spells shared from the Druid spell list, and this is part of what makes Nature Cleric so good, is we get access to Spike Growth. There are so many fights in the game that Spike Growth just wins instantly, because it is a 20-foot radius surface, which is an incredibly large surface, that slows enemy movement um, by half, meaning that enemies will have to take a long time transitioning through the spike surface in order to get to you, and does damage to them as they walk over it. Enemies in Baldur's Gate also will just wa happily walk over the spike growth, taking constant damage. You can also use pushes and pulls and various ways to reposition enemies to get even more spike growth damage. So if you have athletics on one of your party members, you can push them into the spike growth, trapping enemies inside it. This will totally shut down melee enemies and do incredible damage, it also prevents enemies, uh, ranged enemies from fleeing, and because one of the normal weaknesses of Cleric is they don't get access to great AoE control spells, having Spike Growth as an option is a really significant boost to your character's effectiveness. You also get access to some of the other uh, standout cleric spells at level 2, though what we're going to add to our prepared spell list mostly is just spiritual weapon. This also combos extremely well with spike growth, because enemies trapped in spike growth won't be able to get away from the spiritual weapon and will have to attack it. It has great resistances, and if they're attacking it, they're not attacking your party members, and also that means it's going to consistently be able to do its damage, because the enemies won't be able to escape it. Normally the thing that holds this spell back is that enemies have to uh, enemies can just run away from it, and it moves very slowly, so you have to use it to like trap them in choke points and stuff. But this character brings its own control with spike growth, so you can keep enemies trapped next to your spiritual weapon. Also, comboing with that, incidentally, um, is other effects from any other party member that will lay down damage surfaces. So, any ice surfaces or other damage surfaces from any other party member combo incredibly well with spike growth, giving this character an extra layer in addition to the already very powerful things that Cleric is doing. At character level 4, you get access to your very first feat, and we are going to take our ability improvement to even out our ability scores. This gets us a plus 3 initiative, which is really good for this stage in the game uh, on a non-dexterity character. Plus 3 initiative means we're going to win a lot of initiative rolls, and having command and spike growth means that we can use the ability to win initiative to shut down enemies before they get to act. One thing to keep in mind in Dungeons & Dragons combat is that you can think of it basically as an exercise in reducing the number of relevant actions your opponents are taking as much as possible. Winning initiative plays into this strategy, as do control spells provided by this cleric, um, because if you go first, then enemies are less likely to get a turn. Another thing about the importance of initiative is that in a combat you win, which if you win the game will be every combat, you will always take the last turn. So if you take the first turn, that means just fewer turns that your enemies are taking overall. For our cantrip selection here, you can pick up resistance. There's a couple story events where resistance is really useful in dialogue checks. You can also pick up light because it's very good for Act 2, because you're going to want to be able to light dark areas. Either of those are very good. And for our prepared spells, we're going to add in a couple other uh, spells. There's some situational spells that can be really useful in this spot, like Calm Emotions. Hold Person can be very good if you have a character that can use the critical hits easily. Or just casting Aid on your party is always a great use of a spell slot. Though you can use a camp follower to do that if that's something that you're interested in doing as well. Lesser Restoration can help with um, Astarian's Bloodless debuff or give you access to um, removing paralysis in combat, which can actually be a very useful panic button. So there's a couple different options, and you're going to want to swap your spells out based on what combats you're entering as you get more familiar with, the game, with what spells you need for which combats. At character level 5, we get access to third level spells, and this is where the nature spell list really, really shines. Third level spells are already a strong point for Cleric, but one thing that they are missing is a gigantic AoE control spell at third level, something like a Hypnotic Pattern, or in this case, Sleet Storm. Sleet Storm creates an enormous ice surface 
It is a 30-foot radius, although it's not listed on the, uh, the tooltip here. And 30-foot radius basically covers the entire arena. Enemies on the ice surface will fall over, and if they fall over on their turn, they lose the rest of their turn entirely. So a giant sleet storm not only shuts off enemy concentration, but is also basically a stun. So it's an incredibly powerful effect. You also get plant growth, which notably is not concentration, and quarters enemy movement speed. So it's a great way to keep enemies trapped in your extremely powerful um, in your extremely powerful AoE debuff spells or AoE damage surfaces from other characters. These two things totally uh, solve one of the problems that Cleric normally has, which is enormous groups of enemies, because you have Plant Growth and Sleet Storm and can now contribute the incredible control that another caster would bring in addition to all the awesome utility support and damage that clerics bring. This level is also where you get your other great combat spells because you can concentrate on Spirit Guardians to do uh, very solid consistent damage just by running next to enemies and Glyph of Warding which lets you choose what element you're doing uh, and choose between doing damage and having control. This also, because it can do cold damage, combos very well with Create Water, which you get as a cleric, because you can give enemies the wet condition, you can get them wet, just like in your fanfiction, and then hit them with cold damage, which does double damage to wet enemies. Mass Healing Word also lets you apply the very powerful buff on healing spells, um, uh, buff on healing effects from certain items in the game that I'll talk about when we get to items. So at this level, we're going to want to redo our spell list a little bit because we, we probably don't need stuff like this anymore. We're going to have Spirit Guardians and Mass Healing Word and Glyph of Warding all available uh, for various situations. This is a lot of level 3 spells to be prepared at this level, but they're just so powerful. And of course, sometimes you'll want Sleet Storm or Plant Growth, which are always prepared because we're a nature cleric. Cleric level 6 gets us Dampen Elements, which lets you use your reaction to have incoming Acid, Cold, Lightning, Fire, or Thunder damage, so elemental damage that you might take in a party. This is a, a deceptively powerful effect, because this halving of damage stacks with passing the saving throws. Um, normally, elemental damage spells will have a saving throw for half damage. So between this and good saving throws on your party, allies will often be taking one quarter damage from damage spells, which effectively shuts them off, especially because this character can then heal that damage back up with a mass healing words or other healing effect. Dampen Element uses your channel divinity, which you don't otherwise have incredible uses for. So it is uh, as a nature cleric. So you're going to be able to use this very reliably when your party gets hit by a an elemental damage spell. It also uses your reaction, which is a resource in combat that clerics normally don't get to use. Every turn of combat in Dungeons & Dragons, every character has five resources that they get to use. Their action, bonus action, movement, concentration, and reaction. Up until this point, the cleric had excellent uses for the other four, but not a great use for their reaction. Now, with Dampen Elements, in a lot of fights, you have an excellent reaction effect, so you can maximize your resource efficiency in combat. Cleric level 7, we get Grasping Vine, which used to be a terrible spell, but was buffed in patch 6 significantly, and is now a bonus action that doesn't take your concentration. This adds another really cool element to what clerics are doing, because the Grasping Vine effect, um, not only is it just a bonus action summon, which is just a very powerful thing to be, it can attract enemy attacks, it can pull enemies towards itself over, for example, a spike growth that you've laid down doing extra damage, because an enemy pulled across the spike growth takes damage for every five feet they travel, so that can turn Grasping Vine into a really powerful damage spell, and you can use it in the same turn as casting spike growth, because it's not concentration and it only takes your bonus action. But it also has an AoE entangle effect around it, giving you yet another AoE control spell on your cleric as a bonus action. An AoE control spell as a bonus action is actually a pretty solid thing. This is relatively expensive for a fourth level spell slot, so it's not something you're going to use every turn of combat, but or every combat, but it is a really great option. And again, cleric does not need much in order to solve the very few problems that this class has, because this class pretty much does everything very well already. So even these minor benefits take the class from being an almost perfect class to being a perfect class. For prepared spells, we are going to, at this level, pick up 
Guardian of Faith. This is yet another uh, summon that you can use to block doorways, and because we have a sub-theme of being able to trap allies next to things, you'll be able to very reliably get the damage from Guardian of Faith. Something to keep in mind with Guardian of Faith is it has 60 hit points, and normally when it attacks, it takes 20 damage. But you can decrease the damage that it takes by casting Warding Bond on it, um, and take half the damage yourself. You can also increase its hit points over 60 by casting Aid and heal up the damage that it's taken, getting an extra attack out of Guardian of Faith. Even if you don't do that, though, it's just an extremely powerful effect. Also worth noting is that there's no saving throw for repositioning things with Grasping Vine, so you can use Grasping Vine to pull the Guardian to you. I Finally, for our prepared spells, Freedom of Movement is a great panic button. It can grate your break your allies out of stuns. This isn't something that you cast at the beginning of the day usually, but if an ally gets stunned in a really bad position, having freedom of movement prepared can uh, solve that problem. And banishment is really good against certain enemies because it targets their charisma saving throw, which for a lot of bosses is incredibly low. So this can give you a very reliable option to banish certain late game enemies whose charisma saves are very poor. Always check the saving throws of what what your spells target and the saves of different enemies, and you can select a spell that targets a save that they have a bad one of. So for sort of a default spell list, we might keep Banishment prepared, or we might keep Freedom of Movement prepared, depending on whether we think we need the Panic button more or the Banishment more. At Cleric level 8, you get an extra d8 damage on your attacks, um, which again is means that you're a totally reasonable melee attacker on this character. By this point, you're mostly a spellcaster, but you, you do have the opportunity to spend your turns doing some melee attacks. While you only get one attack per turn, Divine Strike plus Shillelagh plus the unique effects of some staves or clubs can make you have decent damage if there that is something that you want to do. If there's, for example, a combat where you don't want to spend resources or you've already cast your major concentration spell for that combat, like a lot of spellcasters, your typical play pattern on a cleric is going to be to cast one big spell at the start of combat and then use cantrips or low-level spells to clean up enemies after your big spell takes them down. For this character, that might be Sleet Storm knocking everyone over, or it might be Spirit Guardians to set up a bunch of damage. And then having Divine Strike just passively making your attacks do extra damage is pretty good. Just a decent amount of extra damage for your um, character. For our feet, we actually have a couple different options, and uh, all of which I think are really good. One is just to take an ability improvement to get our Wisdom to 20. This increases our save DCs, increases our attack and damage with Shillelagh for the turns where we want to do that, and is always a great option. Another is to take the best feat in the game, Alert. Alert gives you plus 5 to your initiative, and you can't be surprised, which will give this character a massive plus 8 initiative bonus. And for Honor Mode, I highly recommend taking Alert if you're playing on Honor Mode, um, because winning initiative is just so powerful. I mentioned D&D combat is often uh, described as rocket tag, where the, the team that goes first wins. Uh, so you really want to be winning initiative. Alert lets you do that. Another option is to take Warcaster. If you're finding that you're often losing concentration on your concentration spells, you can pick up Warcaster. This gives you advantage on saves to maintain concentration, making you much less likely to lose concentration. So I suggest picking this based on your experience in the game. If you're losing concentration a lot, just because you're taking hits and stuff like that, take Warcaster. If you're playing on Honor Mode, definitely take Alert. And if and just by default, you can take the ability improvement. I'm going to take alert here because this is nominally an honor mode build, but I'm also giving sort of more basics for everybody as we go. Make sure we've got our other uh, panic button prepared here. And then Cleric level 9. This is where the Nature Domain spell list falls off a little bit. Insect Plague is okay in some encounters, but usually this is not going to be great damage. Um, and you'd rather concentrate on something else, like Spirit Guardians or whatever. Wall of Stone does have some applications. There are some encounters where it's situationally very useful. But for the most part, Cleric's 5th level spell slots, you are just going to be using to upcast lower level spells. Most notably, uh, Spirit Guardians. Often you're just going to use a level 5 Spirit Guardians to do great damage, because that will do 5d8 of damage um, every time enemies enter the 
area of effect, and it applies like radiant orbs and stuff if you're using that gear set. So those are always going to be very powerful options, uh, and that's what you're typically using your fifth level spell slots for. In fact, we don't even really need to prepare any of these fifth level spells because we're almost always going to be using lower level spells instead. Upcasted. At level 10, you get Divine Intervention, which lets you get the unique mace for getting that. And the unique mace will be the best in slot weapon for this character a lot of the time, just because the healing aura lets you apply the Bless and Blade War buffs from the on heal items. For a cantrip selection, by now we definitely ha should have our cantrip sorted out, but you can just take whatever you want here. And then when you get access to six level spells, you get some of the best spells in the game here. Um, Clerics get access to a bunch of really awesome six level spells. Hero's Feast is a Probably the best by default, just casting this on your party increases their HP, gives you advantage on wisdom saves, which is really powerful for every uh, party, and uh, makes you immune to poison, disease, and fear, which is awesome. There are many encounters where that will come up often. Now, it's worth noting that you can have a character who's like a hireling or something staying in camp cast Heroes Feast. You don't need to use your party to do this. Uh, but if you find that cheesy, then you can definitely just cast this with this character. It'll be a great use of the six level slot. Another option is to use Planar Ally. Um, Planar Ally for the Deva is going to be one of the best um, day-long buffs that you can get. Just getting that summon is really powerful. And Blade Barrier is a pretty solid combat spell. Again, this is going to be less damage than a lot of other options, so probably you're going to want to spend your 6th level slot on Planar Ally instead of Blade Barrier. But all three of these spells are really solid and excellent options for your character. For our final sort of prepared spell list, I might go with these two. If you have an item that refreshes your spells, then you can use both of them. And then we're going to use our level 5 spell slots to cast mostly Spirit Guardians. And then we can go back and grab a level 1 spell like Hold Person. Something like that that gives us an extra option for our character. This will be kind of a... a powerful default spell list that gives you a lot of options of, at every level in combination with the always prepared spells from Nature Cleric. Finally, at Cleric level 12, we get to max out our Wisdom, which is very powerful to do, of course, because it increases our save DCs, and that is uh, very useful. Also, because we're a Cleric, of course, we get great... Um, we get great wisdom saves, meaning that this character will almost never fail wisdom saves, especially if you have the advantage from Hero's Feast, uh, which is something that's really good, because then this character has your panic buttons on it, stuff like Calm Emotions and Freedom of Movement and Lesser Restoration. If the rest of your party gets stunned or locked down in some way, this character almost never will, and so we'll be able to break them out of it. For items for Cleric, there's a few options, and this character benefits from all of them uh, as usual. You're going to want the best heavy armor and shield that you can find, of course. Um, and in general, one that I like for the mid-game is the Dwarven Splint Mail, which I think you get in Moonrise Towers because it gives you... Uh, plus two constitution, which is just awesome for every character. Um, but mostly you're just looking for the highest AC. This character is going to have great AC, just great armor class, because you get heavy armor and a shield, um, and all of those are really useful. Some specific item sets that are really powerful are stuff that adds radiant orb stacking. So radiating orb, if you do, uh, if you do radiate damage, which you will with Spirit Guardians, then this gives enemies minus one to attack rolls for each remaining turn. This can totally lock down any enemy that relies on attack rolls, which is most bosses in the game, and is one of the most powerful effects you can do to lock down enemies. Also great is items that have an effect on heal, like the Whispering Promise or the Hellrider's Pride Gloves, and those give you Blade Ward and Bless when you heal allies. If you cast Mask... Uh, Mass Healing Word, that's a bonus action to give your entire party two turns of Bless and two turns of Blade Ward, making them take half damage and hit much more reliably, which is incredibly powerful. You can do that um, with the Devotee's Mace as well, because the healing aura is very good, so that's probably the best in slot weapon, but honestly your weapon doesn't matter that much for this character. Um, and then the only other thing that you're really looking for is just some item that gives you Misty Step, because Misty Step you should have on every character, and this character doesn't normally get access to it. And other than that, 
gear that gives you increased save DCs is really good. Gear that improves your initiative is really good, just like it is for every spellcaster. So those are things that you're looking out for. Also, just for fun, let's look at a couple spell combos that are available exclusively to Nature Cleric. Just some fun tricks for combat. So the first one is that um, if you have a Grasping Vine down and a Guardian of Faith down, so we can cast uh, Grasping Vine and Guardian of Faith. Oh, let me let me actually do that. The animation takes a long time. <laughs> the Grasping Vine is 100% reliable for pulling allies to it. So you can always pull the Guardian of Faith on top of enemies, and then if there's an enemy in this radius, it'll hit them. Uh, and then, of course, you can use the Grasping Vine to try to pull enemies to the Guardian as well. When they enter the Guardian's radius, the Guardian will whack them. Another really cool one that you have access to, this also doesn't take any concentration, so you can do that while concentrating on something else. Another cool um, setup that you get is access to... I'm trying to do this without... <laughs> Hitting my uh, my cool pals, the owl bear and the and scratch and everybody. Um, another one that you get access to is spike growth, which you can use to totally block an area, and then you can cast spiritual weapon in the spike growth. And then this, because it's flying, is completely immune to the spikes, can traverse over them freely. Enemies trapped in the spike growth or the plant growth will be stuck attacking the spirit weapon the spiritual weapon spiritual weapon has 20 hp and great resistances so enemies will often waste their turns attacking it another great option that you have access to is glyph of warding plus sleet storm that can use that can give you a non-concentration damage spell and lock enemies down in the sleet storm or sleet storm plus plant growth both of those are very powerful effects just locking enemies down inside those effects is really good and glyph of warding works really well with sleet storm because enemies will often be wet if you uh if you like hit the sleet storm with fire and then it will turn into water which will get enemies wet and then you can hit them with a cold based Glyph of Warding, which will not only do double damage, it'll refreeze the water surface for the Sleet Storm. Um, so that combination works extremely well if there's fire or torches and stuff in the area. Those spell combos are some really cool things that Nature Cleric gets access to specifically, and all of which uh, I think really help fill the holes in this character's um, in, in this character's kit, something which are, of course, already very small because it's a cleric, so it can already pretty much do everything, and this takes it over the top to being able to do just about everything. All right, my friends, I hope that you have enjoyed this look at the Nature Cleric. I think this is one of the most powerful and underrated uh, subclasses in the entire game, and I hope that you enjoy adding it to your arsenal. If you have enjoyed the video, of course, feel free to leave a comment, uh, like the video, both of those things help me out a ton with the algorithm, and you can subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. Cheers, folks. I'll catch you next time.